Hello, all. Welcome to Whiskey and Wisdom, or Tea and Titillations, or I don't know, or Gummies and Gumption. I don't know. What, what, whatever name you guys want to use for it. Alley Cat, I love it. Wearing your beautiful new Whiskey and Wisdom t shirt. Hello, Miss Karen Dunn. Hello, Elaine. Wait, does it mean I had to eat a salad? I ate a big late lunch. So I'm probably just going to go ahead and intermittent fast and skip dinner tonight. Uh, hello, hello. Did I miss tomorrow? It's good to see you in here. What did I see? Uh, Sean, going to pour a couple. All right, come on and join us. Trash and uh, keep it trashy, my friend. Keep it trashy. Miss Sarah, it's good to see you in here. Hopefully you are taking a few minutes with your hectic life to uh, relax with us for a moment. Miss Kukla, what's Miss Kukla having this evening? Yeah, is Booger having a baby? That is so awesome. I mean, now that men can have babies. I did share that article with you from earlier this week, guys, where... Uh, Scientists are working on uh, scraping uh, skin cells from one man, culturing an egg somehow out of it, and that adding sperm from another to have a fertilized embryo. Yeah, nothing like playing God. Gabriel Garza from Ovila, Texas. Go Steelers. I like the way you think, Gabriel. Oh, wait a minute. Some rather suspicious characters in my back office. Well, hello, everyone. <laughs> How's all it right. going? I was not ready there, but uh, I know that's always, uh, I know you enjoy those. <laughs> it's, oh, I hope everyone is having an amazing evening. An amazing evening. Now, hey there, Kukla. And yes, 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 I did lose a few pounds today. I did. It looked like someone had uh, had had shaved a cat bald on the floor, judging by the amount of hair that came off the top of my head. It was pretty impressive. Oh, the poor frozen frog. Look at freedom as choices. Uh, little icon. Oh, that makes me think of the frozen iguanas in Florida when they had that 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 short spell. Uh, of it actually being cold enough for the iguanas to start falling out of the trees. I don't know if you remember that one. I think it was last year during the winter. Yeah, beware of falling uh, iguanas. Yeah, I mean, falling iguana serious. warnings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a problem in Florida. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Real world problems, right? Uh, Jackie, first time one of you guys pushes a baby into the world. I want to watch the last 10 pushes. Me too. Did you hear me making that comment about the skin cells, the embryos, and the men having babies? <laughs> I don't want to try to figure out the uh, the scientific logic behind no. any or all of the above. <laughs> I will leave that to the gender studies professionals and graduates. I, I'm certain they have opinions. PZO, I love this one. If I delete the zero off my beer, it's only nine calories. I think you are onto something. I think we should have a project to delete the zeros from our food, from our caloric uh, intake. I think that is where a re-denomination is much needed. Mm -hmm. All right. Speaking of absolute debauchery, let's bring in the illustrious Mike Barra. I'm actually checking my uh, blood pressure right now just to make sure I'm not dead. Uh, um, I think we can confirm at the moment, Mike, you are you are alive. I'm not sure about that. I've had a quite a quite an afternoon, and uh, maybe maybe more of an evening coming up. We shall see. Day <laughs> drinking uh, is my normal thing. Oh, my blood pressure is great. I'm alive. So, Whew. hey, how are you, gentlemen, tonight? It's been a week. I missed you. Well. I missed Zach. I didn't really. Yeah, I didn't really. Really. Yeah, that's okay. I missed, you I missed you both. We were actually down, Mark. I was down today by the Ahern Hotel where we had the get together here um, uh, with the Diana put together. 
And I was remembering that great steak dinner we had and stuff, which you bought. Oh, man. That was an amazing steak dinner. And speaking of which, uh, it is, uh, we, we actually talked briefly today. It is time to get busy <laughs> and get another event scheduled for Vegas. When's a good time to go to Vegas, Mike, and do another event where well, it's not completely crazy with the Grand Prix? Ideally, April would be a good time. Or then again in the fall, I mean, you don't. You can be here when it's in July, when it's 120, and I'm not kidding, 117, 120, you can be here, but you got to spend a lot of time at the pool. You got to spend a lot of time in the pool and uh, to survive. And it, you know, you basically just go from one air conditioned place to another. And, you know, there's no, there ain't a lot of time spent outside looking at the fountains at the Bellagio uh, on those summer night, summer days, because it's still 106, you know, even when the sun's not up. So bad earlier earlier is better may would be the outside limit yeah that has me rethinking i was trying to set something up for possibly may well may's not bad May's not bad and it's been cooler here this year than it supposedly is supposed to be it's been way cooler uh and rainier so you know i mean i i turned the heat on yesterday uh so it was that chill in the morning so that's unusual, apparently, for Las Vegas. But uh, so it may it may just ca that may carry oh. into May is what I'm saying. We are supposed to be moving from an El Nino to a La Nina, which is supposed to be uh, a bit milder in the U.S. Hello, Valentino. Yeah, we need I four. Say, I would say that's consistent. That's that's consistent. Um, with our experiencing. Oh, what a sweet kitty. Uh, so. Uh, so what did Valentino do to get in trouble there, Zester? I don't even know this. Valentino learned about toilet paper. <laughs> oh. It turns out Valentino thinks toilet paper is very amusing. And it is. So he spent the entire night taking toilet paper and running it all around the house. <laughs> he managed to take one roll from... Uh, from literally every corner of the house to the other corner of the house. And so I just woke up to what looked like some kind of teenage Halloween prank. Yeah. That, that was well, the morning. And him sitting in the middle just staring at me like, like this. Because he was tired. Because he spent the whole night doing that crap. Give him some so he, he spent the whole day exhausted. Give him some catnip on top of that and see what happens. That'll be. Oh hard. God, I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine what he would do. Well, that did answer the question that I have had for some time. I have wondered if here in Puerto Rico, whether they know, like the teenagers know what TPing somebody's house is. <laughs> and clearly, since Valentino is is in his kitty teenage years, they do. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, he he definitely has figured it out. Still not certain if he speaks English, but we're working on it. We're working on it. He's gonna be bilingual. You know, they have these um they have these these machines now called Fluent Pet, and there's a couple of other brands, and they're push buttons. And what you do is you program them with certain words. Like, you know, in Valentino's case, you would program toilet paper and you you record it with your voice, so it's dad's voice. Toilet paper. So when she wants to play with the toilet paper, she walks over and she pushes the toilet paper button. And it takes some training. I've heard it takes as long as three months before they start using the buttons. If they want to go outside or if they have to use their box or something, you can program that in. You start with four and she can communicate with you. There's some great videos. There's a cat named Billy and there's this YouTube channel called Billy Speaks. And it's hilarious because Billy's got like 25, 30, 40 buttons. And so she's like, she's like outside. And her mom goes, no, outside raining. Can't go outside. And then Billy walks over and pushes a button and goes mad. You know, I mean, it's like <laughs> you, can have, you can have a conversation with your pet. Dog yeah. your cat. You can train them. And it's they, they get to know what the words mean. Uh, here's one. We're going to start off with you. Uh, Rob asking a question. What's your thoughts on NASA going to be launching rockets at the solar eclipse project? Apep, named after the demonic Egyptian god Apep. I mean, have you heard? I, I've never, this is new to me. Uh, I did not know this, nor do I know who the hell Apep is. But thank you, Sharon, for the, uh, oh, that's not Sharon's question. Um, no. The thing about it that's interesting, Mark, is that 
during alignments, during stellar and planetary alignments, the laws of physics are different. They change slightly. The, and there's experiments that have proven this over and over again. Read my book, The Choice, if you really want to know about it. And the cool thing about that is, is that this could be an experiment to determine exactly how it affects launch characteristics. I mean, there's this thing called the rocket equation. You're supposed to know exactly how high, exactly how far, exactly how fast the rocket's going to go. So if they get some really, truly anomalous readings, it not only will be a beneficial experiment, but they could also use it as an excuse to go, wow, this rocket went way higher, faster, and farther than it was supposed to during the eclipse. We don't have any explanation for that. There must be, you know, it's a way for them to introduce stuff that's secretly behind the scenes they already know. So there's some potential, I think, in that. And it's exciting now that I, I know yeah. Oh, and I just looked up and it was, a, we were been live for 11, 11 minutes and 11 seconds, right? When I said that. So let's plan on that's what's happening. Let's yeah, you should have bought a, a lottery ticket. Uh, now I like this particularly question here, Mike, were you able to shut down those fake Instagram accounts? I was the one who PM'd you about it. They even reached out to me. Um, oh. Sharon, they were sending inappropriate nudes. It was probably Mike. <laughs> it was <so> real <laughs> me. Um, Okay, Sharon, I'm not sure which one of those you are. I'm looking at my Instagram list now. Maybe I've got you under general. But um, yeah, I I have reported them and I have blocked them. And that's all I can tell people to do is report them. And block yeah, unfortunately, them. Yeah. like when I get all the, the fake ones following me, they block me. So I can't even report them because I right. can't see them. Whether they're there. Right. Uh, so, I, yeah, when I use what Sharon, there, just report it. Yeah, Sharon, if you have a picture of my penis, send it back to me and I'll know for sure that it was for me. Whether I can tell you right away whether it was for me. So if I sent you a picture of my mail. All right, yeah, that, that wasn't him. That was a... I had just taken a swig of beer, Mike. That wasn't all right. I, we oh, about yeah, just no. watched my camera and the screen get... Uh, wait, get, get wait till I get you in North Carolina again, buddy. Wait till I get you there. We'll, we'll get some stuff going. Wait till I get you out here. Let's get you out to Vegas along with your dad. Oh, gosh. Oh, God. That'll be fun. Uh, I did actually... That, that did bring up a question, though, that I think would be fun for you, Mike. Uh, have you seen the new Netflix TV show? Uh, I do not watch Three Body Problem. Uh, no, I do not watch Netflix because they're affiliated with Barack Obama and some other people I don't like. So no. Well, yeah, I can definitely agree on that one. But uh, this is the I believe it's the I believe it's the Three Body Problem. But it was a astronomical phenomenon that was actually invented by a Chinese scientist. Mm -hmm. I think it was back in the late 80s or the early 90s. And at that point, the Chinese government, the Communist Party, just completely destroyed this guy. You know, yeah. absolutely, you know, off to the gulag. Enjoy he your stay. In things he shouldn't be investigating, yeah. Yeah, enjoy your stay and, and, and all the like. And the, the show itself, not really going to, you know, place any type of recommendation in terms of it uh, as as entertainment. But from a thought standpoint, the three body problem well, was particularly interesting to see actually brought up just because uh, of, uh, of a lot of different assumptions. And so the TV show essentially presumes that we go out and I guess this would be probably the more interesting question. What's your thought on SETI? S-E-T-I, the government-based organization designed to try and contact alien civilizations ahead of time and also try to sit there and, and take into account anything that they may be sending back. Because that's kind of where the TV show goes, where it's immediately yeah. like, what happens if we contacted an alien civilization? Yeah. Um. I think we said, out, you, know, you may not know where we're at, but we got a really cool habitable planet here with some cool resources. Come take them because exactly. we are technically oh. inferior. Yeah. You know, and we're only capable of radio messages. So right. we're, we're real stupid in comparison no, to that. No like, advanced civilization is going to be using radio, still using radio. We should not still be using radio. We should be using multiple other scalar technologies, hyperdimensional technologies that can create like you know, I, I literally I literally should be able to be like a hologram there in the room with you guys. We should all be able to sit together and look like we're all together and 
it, there's just technologies that that really advanced civilizations are going to use. They're not going to use radio, so it's a waste of time. That's why we're not finding any radio signals because nobody's using radio. You use radio for a little brief period of 25 or 30 years until your your Tesla comes along and figures out, well, we can use these other methods of communication and transferring information. And we did discover that and it was completely suppressed. So I think it's a waste of time and energy and it's a cover up. It's just a, it's just a cover up for, um, you know, to keep people from dabbling into things they should not be getting into because they might lead to free energy. So free energy. Yeah. Free energy. Pure energy. Um, it, it, it does like, uh, you, you do have to ask yourself if we've already been, you know, what, why do we need the facade of, uh, NASA going to the moon? If we've been there and we saw things there and people, and we've got, uh, technology and backwards technology. And at this point, that seems pretty obvious, right? That's why I think, uh, Elon Musk is kind of calling their bluffs, uh, by forcing and pushing and going to the moon because he outs all of them. Yeah. It, it, at some point, they have to break down and say, okay, we have all this. Here it is. Oops, we need you on the inside. And maybe they already have. Or uh, he goes up there and discovers it and uh, shows us all the videos and shows, and and, and then it's all out. So, uh, hmm. Well, the, the, the one that always messes with me is that our radio signals uh, essentially continue on in the vacuum of space right. for eternity. Right. Which but means really like weak. we started sending out radio signals. What we can go back to the late 1930s and the early 40s. That was mm -hmm. the very first time the human civilization was putting out a radio signal. Actually, and, the early 1900s. Actually, the early 1900s. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I was thinking about it from a military application. Okay. And yeah. So, you know, you're, you're probably right. It probably was invented before that, before we figured out we could, uh, we could more effectively, uh, you know, uh, pursue war with the technology, but that means though, with how slow they actually travel, we would have to wait probably another century for a legitimate civilization to even have a chance of having picked up our radio signals. Yeah, which well, means they're they're... in the future, if there are other civilizations out there, they're going to hear our initial radio signals. Right. If, if there's a civilization on Alpha Centauri, one of those. Planning around one of those three stars, they got our signals within four years. So they've yeah. they've been like, wow, these people, are, wow, look what they're doing now. Wow, oh, another war. Oh, wow. Oh, oh my God. What is this reality TV? What Survivor? What? Yeah. And then it gets and now what? This is their Secretary of State, really? This person? Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait till they see our Assistant Secretary of Health. Uh, yeah, and the Secretary of Transportation. Yeah. Hey, sir. I, Right. Just wait for the Ooh. aliens to show up and meet our president. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. Take me to your leader. Oops. Don't think we are a joke. They'll be like, oh, this actually is a reality TV show. Oh, oh. <laughs> the dumbest president or something. I don't know. It's yeah. Nuts. Yeah. Um, old Ken, welcome to the group. Um, there's so many, like, you know, just fun ones in here tonight. Um, so what are your thoughts on tachyon particles? Wow. Uh, did not expect to get that question tonight. No, nobody, I didn't either. Nobody knows that tachyons exist. They don't really know that they exist. They've done these experiments where they were looking for them and then they found them, of course. Nobody even, nobody knows that they really exist. So basically everything on Star Trek The Next Generation, we can, re, you know, we can send them a reverse polarity tachyon pulse to disable their deflector shields. Yeah, that's all just... Techno babble gobbledygook. Uh, I I remain skeptical of ever, anything at the subatomic level. Okay, I, yeah, I, I just have to. Uh, I just need to reconfigure my forward array so I can detect those tachyon particles. Yeah, there you go. Those the reverse polarity tachyon particle burst designed to you know minimize the effect of the Romulan cloaking device. Well, now I'm like kind of out of phase, so I'm kind of like dipping in, dipping out. It's uh, creating some problems with my. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I kind of lost my uh, train of thought there. So what are your thoughts on the whole Skinwalker Ranch saga? Do you personally know Travis, and what's your thoughts on his legitimacy? Well, well I don't one, know. Hit Skinwalker Ranch, and is he talking about Travis from A Night in the Sky? Are we talking about the Travis Walton? No, 
No, we're talking about Travis Taylor, who is one of the stars of the Skinwalker Ranch uh, show. Uh, Travis Taylor is a, I think he's a, I think he's a physicist, engineer. I know he's an engineer. Um, you know, worked on some classified projects. Fellow traveler in the sense that he and I, you know, we talk the same language. We're both from we're both aerospace guys, and we get along really well. And we wanted to do a show together. Travis himself is legit. Um, last time I talked to him anyway, I, I hear things about that show that they are now, um, you know, pulling a lot of stuff out of their butts and mm -hmm. uh, making things up. I hear more of that stuff. I, the, the guy that I know, and the last time I hung with Travis was really 2019 or 2020. We haven't really talked much since then. Um, I but I, I, up to then, up to then, totally, totally honest guy, totally honest guy. Like he got irradiated. He doesn't know how, when, you know, the whole thing, first season one or season two, he got irradiated. That really happened. So, you know, we talked a lot about the show. It's like, dude, he goes, I don't know what's going on there. That shit really happened. And then there's some other stuff. So okay, okay. can I pick up on this one? Because sure. we know from Blind Fog, Blind Frog Ranch, an iridium deposit from a meteorite. They uh, actually sent the Geiger counter through the roof. Mm -hmm. And these ranches border each other. You had a larger meteor, asteroid, whatever. It could have left uh, iridium and uh, yeah, and it, uh, nuclear yeah. signatures everywhere in the, Iron, in the area. Yeah, Zen and any, any number of things. So um, it, you know, he's an honest, he's, I don't know about now, but the last time I was chatting with him, I, I experienced him as completely honest. But that was three or four years ago now. So uh, now Kim Traverse over here, just coincidence, but they're firing up CERN on April eighth. Huh. Dude, it's like, hey, look, there's a new tomb with a right. I mean, a new humanity. Let's open it up. Well, the, these alignments they change the so-called laws of physics. The laws of physics are not immutable and they're not laws. I mean, there was a guy named um, uh, Jacques Allais, who was a French, actually an economist, but also liked to dabble in physics. And in the 1950s, he was swinging experiments with a paraconical pendulum. Now, a pendulum is a free swinging pendulum. And under normal conditions, the pendulum, if you keep swinging it back and forth, will swing with the rotation of the planet Earth, right? During the eclipse over Paris in his lab, and it was an isolated lab and all this other stuff, it not during the eclipse, it not only started um, accelerating in terms of swinging faster, it went backwards against the rotation of the Earth. And he repeated the experiment six years later. Mm -hmm. And that is, according to the current laws of physics, that is mm -hmm. impossible. But it happened, it's been, replete, it's been repeated, and NASA tried to copy it in 1999, and the guy who had all the data took all the data and and ran off with it. Nobody nobody knows what they got, but trust me. It, so if alignments of planets and stars and the center of the galaxy can change the laws of physics, and they fire up CERN during that, Jesus, you know what what's it going to be like? Doom? Are we going to be playing Doom? You know, with Hell Spawn from the eighth dimension coming through? I don't know. I wouldn't. Do that. Um, I'm a little more worried that uh, everybody's going to start drinking Bud Light, and uh, yeah, I'm just going to have to leave the party early. So, what are you drinking, Mike? I'm just drinking water. I've been I've been drinking all day. I I did a uh, did an interview for a friend's documentary. Um, she's making a documentary about her uncle Jose Escamilla, who was the Roswell Rods guy, passed away three or four years ago, wonderful guy. She's going to finish his documentary on the Battle of L.A. So I did an interview with her, and then we went and had a few, and uh, I'm trying to rehydrate now because I might be going back out again later. So we'll see. No, I hope you do get to go back out this evening. Yeah, it should be fun. Yeah. Um, I am her, you know, ladies, maybe we should. Can we raffle off a dinner with Zester in Nashville while we're there? I, as long as someone picks the charity, then then I will I will happily happily participate. Now the charity is your your crypto wallet, dude. That's the charity. <laughs> I, I was thinking something a little bit more charitable, but no. you know, that's what Zim is I was for. thinking, you know, we we can help. That's what Zim and Bolivar is for. Come on, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Plan for the future. Right. Because of all the toxic masculinity that we've had in here, and just to keep all of us guys on our toes, I think it's a good time to bring in a visit here. Trina. Oh. Hi, Trina. Good evening, boys. Good hey. evening, boys. Gentlemen. Howdy. Nice to meet you. Gentlemen. Hi, sister. How are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm fantastic. Your daddy's got to <laughs> hang out with my girl, so now I get to hang out with your boy. Oh, nice. Oh, that's true. That is true. And that only uh, is only fair penny is dad taking. You know, maybe maybe we should. We should auction off the men from Whiskey and Wisdom for uh, charity. Although I don't think we're allowed to auction off Andy. His wife would, um, yeah, that would not be pleasant for any of us. And she's a wonderful, charming lady, so we won't auction off Andy. That would not go. Or the King Dude that joined us last week. Maybe in place of Andy, you can auction off one of your, he can auction off a silver bar that has Whiskey and Wisdom on it. Yeah, I kind of like that idea. Yeah. We'll sign up uh, Zach's younger brother, my other son, uh, as well. And uh... <laughs> no, can we get Dave in there, Mike? Dave is uh, Dave is busy taking a nap right now, which is his top priority. <laughs> so, so no, I don't blame him. No, I don't think so. I don't think we're going to get Dave here. But we have Sebastian is joining. Oh, I see Sebastian back there. Oh, a little bit. No, I'm not waking him up. It's not working. <laughs> yeah. No. So what's going on in um, Texas or wherever the hell you are? <laughs> that would be Arkansas. That would be Arkansas. And we're getting ready for a stinking eclipse, if anybody's ever heard of one of those. Oh, yeah. We were just talking about that, actually. <laughs> no, well, no, two Anytime you want to put your face on camera and join us on a Whiskey and Wisdom, you're absolutely welcome. Absolutely. That would um, be fun. That would be fun. That would be fun. Matter of fact, maybe what we should do is turn it over to like you and Kukla and let the ladies run it. And you can bring the men in and out whenever you want to ask us a question. And we just get stuck in the back office until you're ready to pull us out and ask us a question. I thought this was our show. You're giving it away already, Mark? <laughs> Only for like one night. It's a special thing. It's, it's kind of one of those where, you know, you, you flip the roles. Guys, yeah. you're, you're messing with his testosterone. He's having yeah. some issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I have, I have a quick question. You're talking about Nashville. Is there any chance that you have a layover till Monday? Um, let me look at the... Because well, I'm, yeah. I'm arriving on Sunday, and I would love to be able to do dinner with you guys on uh, Sunday evening. Let's see. Saturday's the 12th, 14th. 14th, they actually have us scheduled for like a Billy Joel something with Charlie in Nashville. I have um, a ticket to that. Uh, well, that is where we will okay. be. Zeth and I have not even told him that I'm uh, abducting him for that. And then we are leaving the 15th to head back to the Carolinas. So I will get to overlap and see you guys. Awesome. Yes, I got a phone call from one of our friends there in Nashville that she's blonde and somewhat considered a sister because we get mistaken for each other at different events. And she says, I have your ticket. I expect you to be here. I said, okay. <laughs> It's not that far to drive for you. No, it's easy. Um, yeah, yeah, ladies rule. Well, oh, sometimes. Wait, what did I, what did I up? Dense rule. I, I, I still thought this one was the funny one. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you know, if people are going to post things like that, you, you you gentlemen that prefer stiffer drinks than my little, you know, Kool-Aid wine over here, you should have you a shot of Fireball or tequila that when you get one that good, you have to do a shot. 
<laughs> yeah, th this might get a little too interesting, Trina. <laughs> this might get a little too interesting if we start that policy. I think I may actually be the weakest drinker of everyone. I don't leave my beer. Uh, when it comes down to it, I don't leave beer. Uh, beer's never done me wrong. <laughs> right. That, Liquor, that's, right. Yeah, that's a cruel mistress. She has definitely done me wrong in the past. So I, I stick yeah. to my beer and it's safe here. Didn't didn't Clay Travis make his career by going on CNN and saying, there's only two things in my life that have never let me down, beer and boobs. And they're like, did you really say that? And he said, yeah. And the next day he just, just Clay Travis just blew up as a, as a uh, commentator. So, yeah. And I have to agree with that, by the way, beer and boobs have never let me down either. Mm hmm. Um, did you want to answer that one about on or whatever? I, I would here? be happy to. I am on uh, Hero, and we are only on Rumble, and it's Hero, honest, real, everyday opinions, and you have to do it all together in one word on uh, when you type it into Rumble. And I am on three days a week, and Dallas is on with me. Oh, how is beautiful, Charlie? Charlie, I was out with Charlie until I walked in here and hit the button because Charlie, he did something to himself two weeks ago and he's still not over it. So thank you for asking. Charlie could use your prayers and so could his mom because I'm tired of cleaning up gag and stuff all over my floor. Oh, boy. So he, I guess y'all, I'm, I'm going to do a PSA if you don't mind since y'all are pet people. If yes. you have any of those little raw hides that are about the size of your pinky and they're probably five or six inches long, mm -hmm. throw them in the trash. They are awful. They're from the pit of hell. Do not mm -hmm. let your pets have those. I'm just saying. He swallowed his hole the other day and it got hung. And we have been dealing with this for two weeks. It won't come up. It hasn't dissolved. We still have issues. But he's eating and pooping. And they said if he's peeing, pooping, and eating, it'll dissolve eventually. And I'm like, when? So that's my issue with him. Uh, one other thing that since, do y'all listen to Joe Rogan? Uh, on occasion, not regularly. Well, it, it was funny that you said what you did about Bud Light because right as I was coming in here, a friend called and he said, have you heard Kid Rock and Joe Rogan? And I go, well, no, I'm not really a Joe Rogan listener to. You know, I just don't listen to him unless we get, you know, snippets on Telegram or something. Kid Rock actually witnessed to him about Jesus using Bud Light. And I said, well, you're going to have to send that to me. I'm going to have to listen to that one. <laughs> so uh, he he said this is he he they said it wasn't in the shot and all of a sudden he picked up a Bud Light can and he took a drink and he said just like Jesus you have to forgive. Well, okay, if he, I, I forgive, like, oh. but aren't they still using this guy gal? I don't think so. Uh, uh, I don't no, think no. so. Uh, they and actually it, it ended up being really funny because it was a regional manager like i mean the the lady that ended up actually hiring yes. I, it's dylan dylan mulvaney the guy they hired uh which sorry pops i might have just got you canceled uh -oh. um because oh, i uh, <laughs> just said his name and then his uh you know his birth gender gender uh oh. <laughs> and uh I and needless to say that. needless to say though the actual manager that made the call and that even paid the guy to do the ad we're, we're talking about like a state representative of Bud Light. And so Bud Light National never approved, you know, Budweiser never approved it. But after it came out, Budweiser doubled down and said, yeah, we support the message. And that is where they messed up so hard. Like what they should have immediately done was no, gone, no, that's a crazy person. They're fired. Don't worry about it. And instead, they were like, nope, yeah. we're going to double down on the situation. We're going to defend them. Or we're going to support the advertisement. I mean. Well, yeah. And so, so you've got to blame them for that. You've got to blame them for that. And for creating a corporate environment where some regional manager thought this would be okay. Yeah. And, you know, that you're just pissing on your brand if you do that. And um, you don't know what your brand is. And it's like, 
this this kind of stuff. I mean, the only way way we have to express ourselves to these mega fascist corporations is to not buy their stuff. So let's yep. keep doing it. You know? Yep. I agree. It's wrong. No, no, I'm kind of with you. And they can't figure out which direction they're running. And for me, if you can't figure out which direction you're running, then I've already figured it out for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I'm with uh, Sharon. They kind of screwed themselves on that one. Mm -hmm. that, that's a, that is not a, uh, well, what is it in football when it's uh, an unforced error, uh, essentially, you know, just uh, the, uh, you know, the QB just fumbles with with no no one actually to blame. And I, I feel like that is of that, exactly what Budweiser yeah. managed to do. The, the best example of that would be Mark Sanchez and the the classic butt fumble where he, he ran into oh. his own, own offensive lineman's butt face first and fumbled the ball. That that yeah, that's an unforced error. And that's what Budweiser yeah, I really thought he had potential as a quarterback and Oh, I did too. I wanted the Seahawks to draft him in 2005, but I think he just, I think he never really got the right coaching, but, but people said, people said, Oh, well, the, you know, the more we put on his plate, the worse he got. Okay. We'll put less on his plate. Cause, cause the first two years when he didn't put much on his plate, he, he, he got you to the AFC championship game. One step away from the Super Bowl. So. That's um, already, yeah. But yeah, Penny, no, I'm with you. Fence sitters decided already. Um, I had a college professor, uh, Dr. Thompson. He was uh, also in uh, poli sci, free law, whatever you want to call it. He was my um, advisor. And uh, I was in one of his classes, and somebody, one of the ladies in the class said, Oh, but Dr. Prisby said this. And Dr. Thompson said, that man's been sitting on the fence for so long. All he has and all he knows is there's a pole up his ass. So whenever I see that, I'm just like, don't. <laughs> you got to admit, I mean, that was, that was epic for a poli sci professor. Well, there you are, Sharon. Uh, I found you. I found you, Sharon. Yeah. All right. Um, Esther, why don't we do a little trivia? Oh, oh no no no! I I did have that one, and uh, I'm very curious whether anyone is going to get this one right. And so I'm going to go ahead and actually put it inside of the chat as well. But I'm very very curious if anyone knows what this saying in Latin um, is derived from. Why does this saying exist? It is, and of course I'm going to butcher the Latin. Pecunia. Non olet, and I am very, very curious if anyone figures this one out while we are That's live. Like of comment. course, if you Google it, you're cheating. Come on, guys. We're, I, we're, I saw. We, we all know that's very, very possible, and anyone could go through and do it. But this is a very, very funny one, and I think people are going to crack up when they find out where this quote is derived from. And so that is pecunia non olet. Sounds French to me. And Sounds that's French probably though. my horrible, horrible butchering of the pronunciation. Uh, it, I couldn't laugh uh, yeah. for years. It, but, yeah. and I unfortunately didn't learn yeah. anything. Uh, it being a dead language and such, it's a little bit hard to figure out how they pronounce. So, but I would also like to point out that French is a Latin language, so you may have nailed it. Thank you, Professor, for that. Wow. Yeah. No, I'm very curious on this one because the story behind it is absolutely hilarious. Absolutely. Oh, it's, uh, uh, it's, not, it's not, I came, I saw, I conquered. I know that. Uh, no, 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 Vinny, Vinny, Vinny. Not nope. sick temper Tyrannus, as always with tyrants. I know yep. that. Um, what other famous Caesarian phrases are there? This is of a space. Yeah, if that helps in any way, this is a quote from Emperor Vespasian somewhere around 70 AD. This quote would have been uttered. Vespasian. Uh, uh, feed him to the lions? I don't know. <laughs> 70 AD? Vespasian. Uh, pecunia is money. Yes, yes. <laughs> that is correct. Pecunia is translated as money in Latin. Okay. And so, pecunia non 
actually translates as money doesn't stink. And the reason that this quote was created was because Emperor Vespasian, right after Emperor Nero, and so a matter of, you know, Emperor Nero, most everyone has heard of the guy that named a, a horse a senator and burnt down Rome. And that was so the emperor that actually ended up following him after the year of four emperors was Emperor Vespasian. And when he came into office, the Roman Empire was broke. They had zero, zero money at all. And so what he did was he levied a tax on the public baths. He levied a tax on urea. Wow. And so if you went to the bathroom and you did not give a portion of your uh, excrement to the government, you were committing a crime. <laughs> and so they actually levied a tax and collected enough money to get the Roman Empire back on its feet. They solved their economic problems by going to every single bathhouse around the Roman Empire and saying, you have got to give us all of your urea. And they utilized the urea to clean clothes, for chemical processes, for everything else. But his son actually came into the Senate one day and said that it was a horrifying disgrace for any emperor of Rome to be going around and collecting commoners' um, excrement. It was an absolute crime. And so Vespasian, in front of the entire Senate, took a piece of gold out of his pocket and walked up to his son and put it in front of him and said, Pecunia non alet. And what he was telling him was, does this gold smell like urine to you? Because the gold is real. And so he actually managed to entirely turn around the Roman Empire's financial situation by making certain that every time you went to the bathroom, it all went to the government. And in and of itself, I think that is probably the most hilarious tax to have ever occurred. And for it to actually be a legitimate thing that turned around an empire, because it is. And you can even go throughout history and look at other historians as they write about the topic. They will give 100% credit to Vespasian and say he solved Rome's financial crisis by levying a tax upon all public restrooms. Wow. Wow. That falls under shit you didn't know until today. So there you go. You learn something. It is. It's absolutely gross. Savvy. Poor, uh, poor Trina is just sitting there stunned going, why? No, 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 no. I'm good because I'm sitting there thinking about all the places where I saw in Israel that Rome built in the in the theaters where they went to the bathroom. And I thought it was going to have something to do with they used their left hand to hold their money when they handed it over. Yeah, I, and I just and I just assumed I'm, just I'm out of this conversation. Just, I just assumed that they wanted our poop because that's what they keep feeding us and treating us like mushrooms and keeping us in the dark and feeding us poop. I'm just gonna check my Instacart. Already. And and my my other brain cells were thinking, God, I hope nobody from the the left is actually watching this show tonight, or they're gonna figure out a way that we're gonna have a token machine at every toilet in America now. So. That is the big worry. What if we just gave the U.S. government an idea? Exactly. And now, now we're going to have, uh, you know, inspectors coming into to each house and septic tank to make certain that they're collecting the proper portion of their Ooh. tax return. No, 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 no. This administration is going to collect our stool and demand on it, not so that they can monetize it, but to make certain we're not eating too much actual meat. Yeah. We're going to check it for the bug content to make certain we are behaving and eating our proper apportionment of bugs and worms. Yeah, thank you, Penny. Yeah, thank you, Penny. Penny love you. New subject, Penny. Thank you. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that was your fun fact, uh, maybe a little bit inappropriate fact of the day. But hey, it's, it's whiskey and wisdom. Back and I heard this was allowed. Yeah, it is whiskey and wisdom. Trina's right. This yeah. is wisdom doesn't make it an uninteresting fact. 
And Mark's, uh, yeah, Mark's totals are like way down. Yeah, we just lost. Yeah. Five. <laughs> That's perfectly okay too. I do these for fun and to spend time with the uh, with the crew. The core crew is what I call them. Um, <laughs> yeah, all right. This is just totally. We've got to. Uh, yeah, don't totally, read the chat. Yeah, no, I'm not going <laughs> to read the chat. <laughs> Hey, they're taxing us. Oh, hey, the one I shared a uh, article. I remember again you know, the last day or two on Toronto taxing you for your runoff. If you have more hard surfaces on your property, they're going to charge you more for your runoff. I'm like, they're using the runoff in the sewage system to flush the system and wash it down. <laughs> and then they turn around and treat it and give it to you as drinking water. I think we should charge them for our runoff. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Sterilized pea is great for your gardens. Wow, that's good. To, good to know since I don't ever grow anything. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, 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 to go ahead and move off of that topic. You know, if you keep telling things like that, Zester, you need the little machine that makes the noise where you have a drum roll. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rim shot, shot. Uh, the, the corny shot. Yeah. yeah, rim shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sitting here reading some of these levels. But yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm getting a kick out of them. Though. We did need the uh, laughter, though. All right, we uh, since we are at the 846 mark already, uh, Mike, uh, let's do something else inappropriate. If you heard any good RV news, uh, latest I heard is Redemptions 41 to 412. That's what I'm hearing. 12, 12 days, the 12 days of redeeming schedule for 41, unless something else messes it up, like they drive a cargo ship into a nuclear power plant or something. You know, that's. <laughs> That's the plan. That's what I understand the plan is. So, yeah, that I had uh, had uh, well, actually, I've had a couple now reach out and say, "Hey, you should warn everybody. These are like legitimate um, intelligence contacts. So you should warn everybody. They should have two weeks of supplies and money on hand. It looks like the banking system may go down for two weeks at any time. Okay, yeah. And they okay. said in the next two weeks. I was like, well. Two weeks and two weeks is like, yeah, I don't even want to know anymore. I'm always prepared for. Yeah, weeks, I mean, that's so. uh, that window opens Monday. So let's hope that that's correct. Yeah. Well, so uh, Gina just said we are paying water runoff taxes in Citrus County, Florida. You know, it kind of makes more sense there than it does in Toronto because of the whole sea level thing. I mean, they do have to create more. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just making it up. Let's. Well, uh, there, there are actually said. certain states where you don't own the water that hits your roof. So in Colorado, all water is owned by the state. And so if water hits your roof, your land in Colorado, it is not your water. It is the government's water. And if you keep that water, you are stealing from the U.S. government. Yeah, well, keep it anyway and tell them to come get you if they want your water, right? Hey, I agree. But and Oregon yeah. did that too. Oregon made it illegal to collect rainwater. Fuck you. Excuse me, Trina. Cover your ears. Fuck you, Oregon. <laughs> How do you feel about that one? All right. Let's not... Uh, uh, Savvy, what happens to your money card? Don't we? Yeah, a lot of people are going to have that problem at some point, although many of us already have that problem. There's just not enough... Uh, there's more month than there is money. Yeah. I think the longer this goes, the more we see that. And I think that's why a lot are getting kind of disheartened. So I really pray we're there at that place that... No, I We're going to see this happen. Yeah. Yeah, I would certainly yeah. like to see it be done by the 13th of April. Lily <laughs> Kay may be on to something here. Maybe they don't want to call it rainwater because we'll find out what they've been seeding in our clouds. And where's my tinfoil at? True. Yeah. It is a rain gauge illegal in Oregon? Boy, I don't know. I haven't even heard that one. That wouldn't surprise me, though. You're not supposed to know how much rain's actually happening because then you could argue with them. Yeah. That's kind of like this year when we had a couple of snows in Arkansas and people would post that they were making snow cr ice cream, snow cream out of it. And I'm like, 
you really shouldn't do that. Mm -mm. Yeah, for uh, uh, that's the thing. You never know where I stand on anything. <laughs> uh, that's true. Um, so did we land on the moon, Mike? Oh, yeah. No. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we did. Oh, we covered up we covered up why we went there and what we found. That's the cover. Yeah, to me, that's what makes the most sense. And do I think some of the footage was staged? Yes, I do think some of the footage was staged because they wanted it to look more realistic. So I think, you know, they kind of doctored some of it for effect for the people. That's what I think. Mike disagrees with me. But... I, I do. I do. What they did, Mark, and I, I covered this in a couple of books I wrote about the moon. What they really did is they they diminished the cameras. They reduced the capabilities of the cameras because they weren't sure what you were going to be able to see. So until they were sure you wouldn't be able to see these glass structures and things near the landing sites, they were very careful. So they kind of dumbed down the quality of the video uh, that they were transmitting back. That is one of the things they did, but they didn't, as far as I know, they didn't overtly alter any of the footage uh, because you can still go in there. And you can process them and enhance them and see stuff over the horizon that ought not to be there. Even the Chinese, they landed on the on the backside, the dark side of the moon, as they call it. And they, these structures were visible over the horizon and, and the falling off exactly like the geometry of the sunlight. So it's like, you know, it's really reflecting through something. So wow. that's what I, that, I mean, so I think you're you're right, but you're partially right. Hi, Anna. Partially right. Uh, Anna is running the event in Brazil. So uh, Zester, ah. wave and say, hey, I'll see you in Brazil. Hey, see you in Brazil there, Anna. I will not see you in Brazil. Wait, you don't want to go? No, yeah, well, to go. what we should have done was yeah, just have everybody had to bring a cat out. Yeah. Well, yeah, I have we need to change the conversation. That that needs to go ahead and be, you know, the, the new. Everybody has to acquire a cat and then, uh, you know. That changes the whole conversation. None of my cat would just sit there like that while I held them like that. They would oh, really <laughs> they'd do a burnout on my face. <laughs> I'm very lucky that, that he showed up this way. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, he's, uh, you, you definitely scored on that one. Although there is another one that um, we have, uh, well, I don't know if Zester knows, we've, we've named Jade. Because she has beautiful jade eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, Zester has what appears to be a slightly older female. I mean, excuse me. Uh, Valentino has a slightly older female version that is nearly as gumby and just as sweet. That's now an outdoor cat at Zester's house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she will not leave me alone. And I, I keep feeding her um, <laughs> and put, put treatments on her. So... She should be. She should be feeling much better. If anything, she is very, very well fed. But she's very rare. She is not only a orange female cat, but she also has. I don't a jade, or are they a clear ice blue? Like she has the crazy like a clear ice green or something. I don't know how to describe them. Like a just crazy teal eyes. She's she's something. Well, now you're a two cat family, Zach. So there you go. Yeah, That's yeah. Cool. No, I'm I'm going to start expanding far too she's quickly. An, yeah, she's an outdoor cat, but we really do need to. Unfortunately, we're going to be traveling a lot in April, so we don't have time to deal with it. But it would be nice to take her and get her fixed, mm -hmm. or unfixed, or yeah, okay, whatever. I know the the good Catholics in the room are going to give me hell for that one. Well, but you should get we have too many cats here. You should get your females. <laughs> fixed as soon as you can because you don't want them to go into um you don't want them to go into heat because it's horrible for them it's it's really oh my god it was miserable from poor penny i felt yeah. so bad i wanted kittens yeah. and all that but no i couldn't do it yeah so you know you can take care trina do you have any dogs or cats i'm a dog girl that's I'm a dog girl that's what i was dealing with with charlie i don't know where he's at he's he's been his tummy's been upset enough he's probably finally sleeping since he has gotten rest in to where he could rest. Bert, you're on a roll today. That is for yeah. certain. I'm keeping an eye on you, Bert. Bert that is not nice, Bert. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. We all chuckle, but it's really not nice. It's not nice, Bert. You're not a nice. No, no. I'm, 
I'm quite partial to my cats. I, I love dogs as well. I really don't have any animals that I'm opposed to. <laughs> well, I do. Yeah, well, honey badgers. Some of them I like for pets, and some of them I like for hamburgers. <laughs> or for omelets. Yes. You're so considerate. Nice. Well, I, I would definitely, I would try to convince a honey badger, Mike, to uh, to be my friend. But the one that I really want is a red panda. And so after no the kidding, that's they're... what I'm getting, I'm getting a red panda. They're endangered. I'm going to have to open up a sanctuary and go through all kinds of crazy legalese to make it happen. But following the RV, I'm opening up a red panda sanctuary. And uh, oh. no one's going to stop me. Yes. I think they're adorable. The yes. crypto king can handle it. Exactly. Yeah, I was, and I was just going to start like, you know, you know, breeding ocelots just for fun and games. <laughs> just because I think they're cool. I want to I want to breed raptors. I want velociraptors. I want to go with the, with the whole, you know. You just got to get your own private. It's like hundreds and hundreds of acres. So, I mean, it would be the perfect place for you to do your own Jurassic Park. And, you know, I may or may not have a uh, can of shaving cream that we could use. <laughs> awesome. Nobody? All right. Yeah. Yeah, the Jurassic <laughs> Park reference. I am mean, I, I, am I the only one that lives in the country out of all of you now? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Well, I, I, you talk about pets and opening you a zoo and everything. Well, I kind of live on like 40 acres and we somewhat have a natural zoo. Like you see the squirrels actually chase each other. And then you have rabbits that are stupid enough to get in the fence with Charlie. You know, we have a fence there. We try to warn them, but you know, it doesn't always work. He's not as fast as my other boys before they pass. They could catch them. But he likes to think he can. It was pitch black two Friday nights ago. And my husband pulls security at a local liquor store sometimes. And I was here by myself. And he needed to go out. So I'm out there. Bathrobe. Phone. And have this lady that has called me from our show. That's talking to me for the first time ever. And I'm standing there. And I hear my dog change his bark. And I'm like, oh, no. And all of a sudden, I I hear something running, charging me. And y'all, we have skunks and it's skunk season. And I'm going like, oh, dear God, don't let it be a skunk. And y'all, a rabbit half the size of my dog, which he's about 20 pounds. So 10 pound rabbit. It was the biggest rabbit we've seen in a very long time. And I have a acre and a half backyard fenced in. And of all the places... It runs across my feet. I scream in this lady ear, lady's ear because it's dark. And I go, oh, shit. <laughs> because I don't know what's running at me. And then the dog runs across my feet chasing the rabbit. And this lady is like, she's busting a gut. And I'm standing there still in shock that a rabbit just had an altercation with me all by itself. And yeah, when you live in the country, Zester, you can have your own zoo when you don't even want it. Oh, I, I've never, I've never lived. Actually, this is the first time being in Puerto Rico. I've lived my entire life in North and South Carolina. <laughs> I've never been, been close to a city. And so it's been weird being down here for the past year and a half. Cause this is the first time where I, I wasn't just allowed to go do anything. You know, my, the joke was always, and uh, this is Pops' joke as well, that if you can't walk out on the front or the back porch and, uh, you and, and do what you say in your boxers, then you, your neighbors are too close. I, I was going to say, yes. Zach, that, that story reminds me of the movie we were talking about a couple of weeks ago. That rabbit's got a mean streak a mile wide, right? <laughs> <laughs> Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's funny. Ch choose off the heads of people. Bull, pull rabbit. That rabbit's got a streak a mile wide no it, it's been very weird adapting to to people being so close uh the only difference is that down here you can just have chickens and a horse in your front yard and, in suburbia and, and no one's allowed to say anything 
Oh, so, you know, you can put whatever animal you want in your yard and no one is allowed to ever say anything down here. It doesn't matter how close you are. If you're inside of the city, they they just don't enforce it. But I was used to being able to just have my animals and not worry. Like, they're fine. They'll no, come they're fine. So, yeah. so is it a lot like the rules kind of on St. Thomas? Do what? I'm not, I'm not certain. The, the, the like animal, uh, like there's no regulations on St. Thomas. Like you have to be oh, careful if you're driving because like there could be a flock of chickens in the road or a herd of goats in the road or. Yeah. Yeah. So. I Whatever. Think, yeah. No, there's, yeah. There's no, I mean, you'll, there'll be a backyard 10 by 10 and there's a horse grazing in it. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. I'd like to say hello to Miss Linda Fuller. Hi. And, uh, I'm glad you figured out how to post. Welcome, Linda. Sarah's mom, welcome to the show. It's good to have her here. And oh, for, anybody that saw, for anybody that for anybody that sees me posting, it's Redneck Rhapsody. If y'all seen me replying to you, uh, yes. Wow. And while cool. we we're on that front, somebody had asked you had mentioned uh, heroes. Um, just give an opportunity for you to uh, repeat that so they know where to find you. I did not realize how many people had not found you with that channel change for you. They haven't. <laughs> it's hero, all capital letters, and it's honest, real, everyday opinions. And you have to type it all out because there's more people trying to jack our name. And if you don't, that's a mess. So there you go. Mm. And I'm glad you shared that. And I just saw CJ Palm was about the rabbit getting electrocuted. You got to find that funny. I had a, uh, we had a, uh, a golden retriever, Shadrach, that had a, could not pass the fence post without watering it, which was inconvenient when the neighbor had an electric fence. <laughs> But, he, but that dog was the sweetest dog ever. About and that ended up terror. like a Tajiki yeah, terrorist. In, that, that ended up like the Tajiki terrorists in uh, in Moscow. Yeah. Zzz. Uh, zzz. <laughs> All right. Wait. Cat Turd just posted. Ask why they're hiding the name of the captain who hit the bridge. Then you'll find all the answers. Uh. Hmm. I think uh, I think that thing was hacked. Yeah, like spending time in Mar Largo now. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. That's what I heard. Spending time in Mar Largo, which apparently is worth a lot more than <laughs> that New York court said it was. <laughs> uh, oh wait, that's not what I meant to hit. Somebody said uh, that's the one I meant to hit. I would say just as a heads up for you, Pops, as a announcement going into the end that uh, you are not streaming on Rumble. No, no, no. I'm, not, I'm definitely not streaming on Rumble. I'm not streaming okay. on Rumble on uh, purpose. It uh, stretches. This is like a big ask for the mods. They are already so overworked. And it's one of those I can almost self-moderate. So if I leave it to just YouTube and Twitch, I can self-moderate if they want to take time off. I mean, it's wonderful. Whip, Kukla, Booger, whenever they get an opportunity to be here, it is awesome. But uh, I want to make nice. certain they already do so much. That's the reason I don't. Although, honestly, Twitch is one that, as a streaming venue, I could give up and never look back anymore. Even though we started with uh, Twitch, um, Bezos and that crew, they're getting, they're getting worse than uh, YouTube now with all of their requirements and where they're sending their money and yeah. all those. Uh, I don't get any traction on Twitch either, so I don't really bother with it much anymore. Or D-Line. I never did Twitch, and, and we're only on Rumble. For anybody that's looking for us, I tried to type that in, and several have asked for me to put it in the chat, but it keeps telling me the original Mark Z won't let me do that, so <laughs> I tried, y'all. <laughs> it, it keeps it keeps oh, blanking out my stuff. Yeah, you can't put links in. No, we did that I, because of the porn bots, and we're held responsible for it. So anytime you try to post the link, unless you're a mod, it takes it out. And I I get that. So anyway, y'all, you can find us on Rumble, and I have Telegram. So we would love to have y'all. After you get through watching Mark Z, you can jump on with us because we are about the end of his show. Uh, during the day, gotcha. Okay. Yes. Speaking of which, we should probably wrap up the evening. 
Thanks for letting me hang out, boys. I was here all by myself. Oh, I, I, I definitely uh, appreciated it, Trina. And it was nice to actually chat. I can't wait to meet you, Zester. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Femininity. <laughs> it was time for us to offset the testosterone. All right, everybody. Um, I'll be back in the morning at 10 a.m. Uh, before I forget, Mr. C is not joining us this Friday. Uh, he took a tennis ball and has tweaked himself. And the first appointment he can get for the doctor to take care of that pain is Friday morning. Um, so we don't have Mr. C Friday morning. Wow, where did he take the tennis ball? <laughs> sounds sounds bad. Not to, not to uh, make uh, he just uh, he just busted tweaked. Anyways, he was very apologetic, but he's like, this first time I the appointment, and the next one was two weeks away, and he says I'm miserable. So. I was like, I totally understand. Take care of yourself. Um, he did want to uh, see if we wanted to like squeeze him in maybe early in the week or something to offset it. And I was like, hey, just wait till Friday. You, you, you need the break so he can recover. Will he still be able to punch in codes? Yeah, they'll probably oh, pull out of the appointment. <laughs> Come on, buddy. <laughs> You're over here to the computer. Yeah, your doctor can wait. We're not trying to wake right. in at Bernie's this thing. Your swollen testicles can wait. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, C. He's back. He's <laughs> back. That's too bad. A joyful voice. He is the, in his 70s and playing tennis uh, a couple, once or twice a week at least. Still loves him. it. Yeah, Good no, I'm, I'm with you. Still competitive at it, even after strokes and everything else. That's, I mean, he's, he's not going to give that one up. That is for certain. Well, you make sure Matt sends him some roll on if he doesn't have any. Yeah, no kidding. No, there's an idea. And there was a rumor that Matt was going to call in, but I've been watching my phone and we didn't hear from him. So uh, he must have uh, gotten awfully busy. He sampled his own product a little early tonight or something. Take one of those He's mad. All right. It's time for me to uh, call it a wrap. Everybody wave. Any uh, things you would like to say in parting? Oh, I have a, um, I, I, do, I have a new, I have a new Seahawks YouTube channel I created just for talking football about my Seahawks. And I'm really enjoying, I'm doing three, four videos a week. I'm going to try to do them daily. It's just cause I like football and I hate what's happening to my team. So I'm just on there trying to create trouble and, um, and, but anybody who goes over there, uh, Mark, I think I sent you the link in the private chat, but, um, mm. it's, Seahawk boy, the Seahawk boys, fearless and stupid uh, NFL channel, I think is what it's called. Wait, so. that looks uh, pretty accurate. Let me uh, draw, draw, drag and drop and, this thing. And my latest, my latest video is Geno Smith is not a unicorn. So stop pretending like he's a unicorn. So anyway, I have almost no followers. I have no subscribe. But and you just go over there, follow, like, subscribe, view some videos. The more you in, interact with the channel, even if you're not a football fan, the, the more I will get recommended to other people. And then I can really, really, really be mean to all the dumb Seahawks bloggers out there that think they don't need a quarterback. I feel like this is a personal vendetta, Mike. It is. Sign to everybody it is. Else. We're like, what, you, let, you have is. one guy you're mad at. And you want everyone to jump in and get behind you so you can get that guy. I just, I just, I just want to know the story of what he did to you. Well, look, here's the thing. <laughs> um, let's see if I've got a little doll here I can hold I, up. I just, just want a doll here. <laughs> I, just, I just want enough money to buy the team and fire everybody and run things myself. That's what. That's my. <laughs> but until then, you're gonna wear a Seahawks jersey that says "Bully Number One." Yeah. Seahawk boy Mike, because my brother is also a Seahawk boy. Okay. All yeah. Right. Thank you, Mark. I wanted to get that to your vast audience. So I appreciate it. But if anybody goes over, I appreciate it. No, I'm not banned yet. Not yet. No, no, I'm 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 going over for certain. I'm gonna be your first troll, Mike. It's actually okay. Now, I think Skip will already beat you to it. It's already it's actually okay to talk about football. It's actually okay so far to talk about football. No censorship. <laughs> Oh, I, don't I don't know. Steelers look pretty good this year. Yeah, yeah, they do. <laughs> we got our good quarterback. We aren't going to talk about them Cowboys, though, are we, Trina? I'm not. I'm not a big Cowboy fan, so it doesn't matter. 
All right. That's All right. it. Now I'm leaving. Bye, y'all. <laughs>